opportunity that we have to sing and praise your name, to bless you, and Lord, to bless your people. Lord, may the Spirit of God rise up big in this place to draw all hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ in song, in praise, in word, and in deed. And Father, we bless you, praise you, thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sorry, honey. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. We are broadcasting on Facebook. And uh, so good morning, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. We're delighted to have you. We're going to begin. We're going to bless his name. The songs will be on the overhead there. And uh, so please stand if you're able to, and let's bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
Come on, lift your hands. Bless him. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That that blood is mine. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That the purpose of you shedding it was for me. Come on, say it with me. The purpose of you shedding your blood was to set me free. Set me free. And I receive it. And I receive it. It belongs to me. It belongs to me. I thank you for it. I thank you. For I bless the name of Jesus. I bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. We can go our way rejoicing every day in the fact that his blood has washed us free and clean. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen? Thank you. That our sins Thank are washed you. away. Hallelujah. That the blood of Jesus has not lost any of its power. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. You may be seated. God bless you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Hallelujah. This morning is Communion Sunday, the first Sunday of the month. We we um, remember what the Lord has done for us. Amen. Truthfully, we remember every day. It's what gives our days purpose and meaning, power. Hallelujah. When we walk in the light of his word and his word tells us that the things of God need to be in our constant focus. We need to remember these things. Um, God knows us better than we know ourselves. Amen. And uh, he says to us in Psalm 103, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. And, and I mention this, that this is a Psalm of David. And when you read it, you think to yourself, who's he talking to? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is of me. Who's talking? David. Who's he talking to? David. Amen? And there are times that the real you, which is the spirit, amen, that's aligned with God, that, that wants to do right before God, needs to tell your mind, your soul, your mind, your will, or your emotions. How many know that's the roller coaster part of our lives? Our mind, our will, and our emotions, what we can understand. We, we wrap our, our, our head about around. How many know we're so limited? When it talks to spiritual things, our, our minds are just so limited. We can't wrap them around. If I can't see it, I won't believe it. No, Christianity is I will believe it first, and then I'll see it. And that, goes, that causes our minds to tilt. That's why your mind can't be the dominant part of who you are. And your emotions, forget them, right? And your will set against the plan of God is super destructive in your life. So that's why we've got to let the real you, you're, you are a spirit, you have a mind, you live in a body. Your body is basically, uh, though it's fearfully and wonderfully made and it's amazing, it's the suit that the real you lives in to negotiate this planet. I've told you before, if you go into space, this is not the only suit. You've got to put another suit on over this because that's hostile to this suit. And if you go under the sea, you've got to put a different suit on. Why? Because that's a hostile environment to this, uh, to this suit. But God has given us this suit, this body, to house our spirit and our soul. Amen? And it is so we can negotiate this planet. We can come into contact with other people. We can use our five senses to, 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 to you know, touch this, this world. But it never was intended that our bodies would be number one must be our spirits and and though our minds are fed with knowledge and, and understanding and books and 
teaching and things which is great and our bodies can be exercised and can be you know made to look real good praise God for those things but don't forget the real you is a spirit and the only thing that will build you in your spirit is the Word of God because it is the bread of life amen the Word of God and so give equal time if you're big in fitness God bless you but make sure you give equal time to the Lord Jesus and his word amen because ultimately this is what will cause you to be stable in your life those other things are not real they're not real stable come on are you with me and so here David is talking to David and he says bless the Lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name you can easily put your name there and I would recommend it bless the Lord O my soul and forget not all his benefits what is another way of saying forget not remember Remember, remember, amen? And listen to this list. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? Your iniquities are shortcomings, sins. Amen? Diseases speaks for itself. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? That's awesome, right? Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? It's almost a crown on your head. Amen. Tender mercies. Hallelujah. And, and, and loving kindness. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things. Thank God he's talking about food. Natural food. But he's talking about spiritual food. Good things. That will build you up. Build your strength. Amen. So that it says your youth is renewed like the eagles. Doesn't say age. You can be stronger and stronger and stronger the older you get. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Based on how much word, how much time you're giving to feeding the real you. The Bible says in your times of need and your times of, of, of troubles and things like this, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Meaning that's when the word of God will begin to rise up. It'll come to your mind and you begin to speak it out of your mouth with faith. That's going to cause you to, to, to mount up with wings as eagles. That's going to be the stability of your life. Are you with me? Physical exercise is good. It's important. But that's not going to deliver you in times of distress. And knowledge and understanding will only confuse the issue. Because in many cases, book learning and knowledge, apart from the Word of God and God's Word, are, are vanity. It's, just, it's a waste of time. Amen. That's why I don't read after many other authors, but the author. Hallelujah. Or those that I can trust that are reading after the Word of God. So you're with me, my brothers and sisters? Let me say this only because it will bless you. I love this. Many of the scriptures are written in what I call the present progressive tense. Which means they're always true. Which means they move with you. So every click of the, of the clock, it's new, it's fresh, it belongs to you. Are you listening? Amen. One of them is, you all know it, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen. He leads me today, next second, next second. He's leading you. He's guiding you. He's restoring your soul every moment of every day. Amen. So you draw strength from the, the knowledge of this word, of the truth. Well, the same thing. Psalm 91 is a psalm of protection. Hallelujah. He says, because you have set your heart on me, that I will do all these things. I'll protect you. I'll watch over you. I'll take care of you. This truth, by spending time in the word of God, will build stability in your life. And when something opposite comes your direction, the Spirit of God will bring that word back up. He say, no, 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 that's not the way it is. Let me tell you the way it is. Amen? Amen. Well, here, in this one, it's the same thing. It says here, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Shout, jump, sing, rejoice. Amen? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth and continues to forgive all your iniquities. Amen. It travels with you, my brothers and sisters. Amen? Amen? It says here, who healeth all thy diseases, ongoing, who's healing. The, pri the presence of God is healing in your life. Remember what I said, turn the switch on? You need to say it out of your mouth. You say, Lord, I'm so thankful that healing is flowing in my body from the top of my head to the soles of the tip of my toes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that I, I don't want to sin, that, that you have redeemed me from sin. But if I do sin, that you forgive me and I receive that forgiveness and I thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Amen. It says here, who, who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Thank you, Lord, that you, are, you have already and you continue to redeem my life from destruction. 
Amen? Destruction will not come nigh my dwelling. That's what the Bible says. It's a promise. No weapon formed against me will prosper. It's a promise. Amen? Hallelujah. It says here, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. We can talk all day about that one. Just to say thank you. Just to say thank you. Lord, thank you. Blows my mind. That kindness, loving mercy, is, is crowns me. Amen? The other scripture, remember, it says, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Let that come out of your mouth. Lord, I'm so grateful that you caused goodness and mercy to follow me all the days of my life. Sometimes I have felt in the past like I'm being followed by dogs, I'm being followed by, by aggressive, you know, dogs that are, that are just foaming at the mouth. And, and, I, and I don't sleep well at night, and, and I'm always looking over my shoulder. No, 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 my brothers and sisters. That's what the devil wants you to believe. The truth is, God has said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So as you go your way, don't be afraid to look over your shoulder because goodness and mercy are following you. And I remember Pastor Clint, who's gone home to be with the Lord now, Pastor of Redeeming Love Christian Center that I went to for many years. Amen. They actually sent me out to Rama when I went. He used to say that he pictures them as massive, angelic um, beings. One's name is goodness, and the other's name is mercy. And when he turns around, no matter what he faces in his life, he looks and he goes, come on, goodness. Come on, mercy. And it sets things in proper perspective. Amen? You're not the bottom of the barrel. You're not the defeated ones. Amen? God has called you more than a conqueror. Not only a conqueror, but more than a conqueror. That in him you always triumph. We always have the victory in him. Amen. These are things that need to be coming out of our mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. Because that's how faith works. Faith believes the word and then speaks it out of your mouth. Regardless of what you see. Regardless of what you feel. Regardless of whoever with every, no disrespect, every, every title after their name says to you. If what they say to you doesn't line up with what the Word of God says, they're wrong. Do I have to say that again? Amen. Amen. If what they say over your life is not what the Word of God says over your life, they're wrong. That's right. That's right. And now the Bible asks the question, come on, whose report you believe? That's where the rubber meets the road, my brothers and sisters. Right. Whose report will you believe? Well, I believe what the doctor says. Uh, you know, don't be a fool. All right, if the doctor's leading you in a good direction, helping you bring healing into your life, that's all right, all right? But if the doctor says it's over, there's nothing we can do, say, okay, well, thank you very much for your kindness, but I'm in the hands of the great physician. Amen. And there's still plenty that he can do, amen? amen? And the truth of the matter, he's already done it. Because right. by his stripes, we're healed. Right. He's already completed the work. I don't have to ask him to do something he's already done. Come on. Preaching a whole bunch in one little perspective. I hope you're holding on, catching. Amen? Because it's so true. Praise God forever. Notice what happens. And let me say this. So that your youth is continually renewed like an eagle. Amen? Come on. That's how you need to see yourself, my brothers and sisters. Praise God. And, and that's what needs to be coming out of your mouth all the time. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Lord, thank you. Lord, you still amaze me. Amen. I'm so grateful. I'm so appreciative. I, I couldn't never, ever exhaust Thanksgiving because you are amazing. Amen. And not only that, based on what he's already done at the cross, but the Bible says he rose again. Come on. He's seated at the right hand of the, of the throne of grace. He's, he's in heaven. He's alive and well. Amen. And he's still doing in his life. He's still standing behind his word in every area for you. Glory to God. And then your future. The times you think about your future, amen, don't bother with psychics, don't bother with all that stuff, because they don't know, That's right. amen. If they get anything right, it's because of a demonic spirit that knows about it already and tells them. Are you with me? Amen. Yeah, I, it's the truth. Amen. The Word of God outlines your destiny. Right. It outlines your future, right. amen. You go from glory to glory. The Lord will prosper me. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper, that you be in health, even as your soul prospers. Spirit, soul, and, and, and body, God wants you to prosper. Amen? 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then the list goes on and on about what God says about your future. You need to line yourself up with what he says. Amen? And stop lining yourself or wondering about your future. Stop. Amen? I'm helping you more than you realize. Stop wondering about your future. Stop thinking about what's going to happen and what's not going to happen and how's it going to happen and everything else. Stop. This mind is not in control. Amen? This body and even its urges, I understand, amen, is not in control. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteous way of doing things. And all these things will be added unto you. Amen? Amen? God will provide whatever your heart's desire is when you're doing it right. When you're doing it His way. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I tell couples all the time. I know I'm preaching this way, but it's all right. I tell young people all the time. If you're believing God for a godly mate, then you make a priority to be godly. Because when they come into your life and you don't match God's criteria he'll find somebody else now, are you listening amen. amen you want a good man or you want a good woman you be a good man or a good woman amen. so when they come you're a gift to them amen. they're blessed are you listening amen, amen. hallelujah when Miss Karen and I how long we married my love I'm sorry how long 31. 31 years by looking at her you'd never believe it she don't even look 31. God bless the truth. Amen? I didn't get married until I was 33, I believe. Right? 32. She's correcting me. It's all right. But I know I said this to her at, my, at our wedding and when we stood there. We were both virgins, by the way. Yeah. Amen? You know, I was believing God for a godly wife. A, a woman who, you know, I could trust. That I never have to wonder if she leaves me if she's if she's going to betray me, stab me in the back. Don't happen. Amen? Amen. I don't lose sleep over it, and she does the same thing. It means a lot. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm not saying that's the end all because if you've already gone, how many of God washes away all our iniquities? Amen. But when I looked at her, she came up that that uh, that aisle with that beautiful dress on, beaming, face smiling. You know, I said to her, "Honey, you were worth the wait." And I say that to you. Amen? Who God has prepared for you is worth the wait. That's right. So you be right. You do right. Because when they come, going to blow your mind. Amen? Yeah. Come on. As I said, don't be ashamed if you say, well, no, Pastor Nick, those days are long gone. No, no, no. The Lord can restore. He says he can restore what the canker worm has devoured. Amen. He can restore. God can restore purity. He can restore, you know, uh, innocence. But you're going to have to do the work. Right. You're going to have to get your mind renewed to the Word of God. Right. You're going to have to start saying yes to what God says yes to and no to the things that God says no to. Amen? Amen. Come on. Amen. Pastor's preaching better than you know, my brothers and sisters. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I go on, but I won't. I'm going to, I'm going to break. But I want, you to, I want you to understand. Amen? That a big key to it is don't forget. Because we are prone to forget. We are prone to forget. Now, except for maybe some rare few of you, come on, what did you have for dinner two weeks ago Friday? You know? How's this? What did you have for dinner three days ago? I know, I know. I'm the same way. I have no idea. You know? What did you have last night? You might remember, hopefully. Yeah, right? So we're prone to forget. And God knows that. And he loves us in spite of it. But he gives us direction. You're going to have to remember. And so it brings us to what we're talking about today. Let's go ahead and um, 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 pass out our, our, our communion elements, please. And thank you so much for your kindness. We serve communion as simply grape juice and a pizza, a piece of matzah. Uh, I say it all the time. Thank you so much, Mr. Pam. I say it all the time. It, it's not so much what elements are, it's who it represents. Are you listening? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you.
So please take that as they come to you. My brothers and sisters, it's not about you. It never was about you. It never will be about you. It's all about him. Amen? It's all about his kindness and his grace. So never hesitate to receive. Because what you're doing is you're taking him at his word. You're believing him. That he loves you more than you can comprehend. And he wants you. Amen? In relationship with him. That was his plan from the beginning. At the cross, he had his eyes fixed and focused on you as an individual. Hallelujah. Yeah. When he was on the cross, let me put it this way, Ms. Karen said this years ago, you were on his mind. He didn't go because he deserved it. He went because you deserved it and I deserved it. And because of his great love, he endured, the Bible says. Amen? So here... It says, for I have received of the Lord. I'm in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. This is the Apostle Paul speaking. He was not there. He was not an eyewitness. He didn't follow the Lord Jesus till many years later. At first he was Saul of Tarsus and he had papers to not only arrest Christians, but put them to death. He was a very devout man in the Jewish faith, but he was off. He thought that Christianity was something that was against God. And the Lord Jesus had to reveal to him that no, this is real godliness and real uh, faith. And so here he now has uh, become Paul, uh, the apostle. And he has received by revelation, in other words, by spending time with God, he's received the revelation of what happened in that uh, what we call the Last Supper. And he says here, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was, he was betrayed, took bread. And I always like to add for emphasis, the same night in which he was brutally and horrifically betrayed, humiliated, tortured, and beaten. The same night. This is where his priority was. He took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. What was the death of Jesus all about? It wasn't because of anything he had done. It was all about what we have done. Amen? Mankind, past, present, and future. And Jesus went to the cross to take upon himself, not only take upon himself, the Bible says, he who knew no sin became sin. He didn't bring on sin, he became sin. He didn't allow, you know, sickness and disease to come on. He became sickness and disease. And poverty and lack and want and everything else under the curse. He became the curse for you and for me. Truthfully, for everybody on the planet, even those who blaspheme his name, those who will never surrender to the word of God and his will, who, who will curse God right to their, to their dying, he, they're included. For God so loved, we all know it, the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. This is why he did it. Are you with me? And so it needs to be, you know, the meditation of our heart. It needs to be a declaration of praise. Lord, thank you that you thought so much of me that you were willing to go to the cross so that I would not be left out. It's amazing, isn't it? It really is amazing. And this, the word of God, you know, whether you realize or not, I'm feeding your spirit this morning. I mean, I'm feeding it, you know, steak. I'm giving it filet mignon and, and whatever you may like. And, I'm, and, and after you leave here today, you're going to be like supercharged. But now listen, my brothers and sisters, it's not up to me to maintain that. Come on back. I'll keep helping you. We'll do the very best we can. But you have to maintain it. You're going to have to go your way and, and spend some time in the presence of God and bless his name. Amen. So uh, so we take, just as he says, we take the bread and uh, we use matzah because matzah is a pretty good representative. It's pierced 
like Jesus was pierced in his head and his hands and his feet. It striped as his back was torn open, his front was torn open. It's burned, meaning that he was he was burned. He he was abandoned. He was betrayed. He he was left. He even he even said from the cross, he said, Father, why have you forsaken me? And, and, and you may say, well, God would never forsake Jesus. And the answer is, oh, yes, he did. And, and again, Miss Karen preached it, and I'll never forget, a long time ago now. But she says, he turned his face from Jesus, so he'll never have to turn his face from you. That's awesome, isn't it? Yeah, Jesus endured his father turning his body because he became sin. He became sickness. He became disease. He became the curse. And then when the curse was nailed to the cross, amen, redemption by his resurrection, redemption has come to all mankind, that all who come to him can be saved if we'll believe on his name, if we'll take what he has offered and say that belongs to me and I receive it. Are you listening? Amen? So first let's receive the bread. And then when you're ready, the cup, and, and thank God, amen. All he asks is when you do this, remember me. God bless you. That's good, isn't it? Amen. Well, it's time for the offering. The offering envelopes in the aisles. If you're writing a check, it's Faith with Love Fellowship. And uh, we appreciate your faithfulness. God appreciates your faithfulness. Amen. Hallelujah. When you're ready, we're going to make our declaration of faith, which is our, our habit. Amen. I know there's good habits and bad habits. This is a good one. Hallelujah. I think I'll keep this one. Other habits, let them go. Come on. Ready? Let's stand to our feet, would you please? Let's make this, this our declaration of faith. As I said before, the first slide is what we're doing. The next three is what God wants to do in your life. So as we read them, believe that he's doing them. Amen? Ready? This is my seed. I sow it into the kingdom of God. I sow because I love God and want to see faith with a fellowship continue to fulfill what God has called us to do. I believe that as I sow my seed, it shall be given unto me, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It shall come back to me in many ways. I thank you, Lord, for good opportunities coming my way. I thank you that the windows of heaven are open because of my obedience to sow my seed. I thank you, Lord, for the favor of God upon my life and the grace to prosper as you have promised me in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you give. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God forever. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Yep. yep. Would you stand one more time, please? Lift one hand to heaven, one hand towards this offering. Father, we thank you that you give seed to the sower, that everything good starts with you. Life was your idea. Breath, choosing us to be alive, all your idea. Giving us all that pertains to life and godliness, all your idea. Giving us the gifts, talents, and abilities that we all have that are so varied and distinct and different. It was all because of your leading, what you did. And we just want you to know we appreciate it. We thank you. And so we bring our tithes, our offerings before you so that your will might be done on this earth as it is in heaven. And that is to bring the gospel to the earth. To preach the gospel to every creature. We thank you for our part and your faithfulness to watch over your word, to provide and to perform miracles, signs and wonders that people would get saved, healed, delivered, set free and made to be disciples to go out into the world and bring the same gospel to the people in the world they share this planet with. 
We praise you. We bless you. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. God bless you, Miss Karen, as you go. We um, hopefully you were able to receive a bulletin. We have a few things that are on our bulletin I want to bring to your remembrance before we get into the word. God bless you. Um, Numbers chapter 13 is uh, we've been talking about um, with Joshua and Caleb from the book of Joshua. Um, the quote from Numbers chapter 13 is, we seem like grasshoppers in our own sight, and we must have seen the same to them. And J Jason Michener says, when obstacles stand in your way, you are like Caleb, ready to overcome anything. Or are you like the other men who went out to spy the land, only seeing the size of the obstacle and your own weaknesses? Caleb and the other men saw the same things. The difference was their perspective. While the other men saw themselves as weak, Caleb saw the Israelites as strong, not in themselves, but in God. With God, they could overcome any obstacle. Now take this home with you and read it. You're welcome to turn to, this, to the scripture. I'll, I'll just catch you so that some of you that are especially new to us don't misunderstand. Nick preached a great message. You can go back on uh, Reverend Nicholas Fontana Jr. Uh, preached a great message. You can go back and watch on YouTube. You can go back on Facebook. You can watch um, previous services. We always post them and, and then they are uh, saved. You can go back and watch them. Uh, you can catch up. You can go back and listen to a message again that you may have missed some things. And uh, it's our honor and our privilege to be able to do so. But uh, we were told that uh, back in the day, Moses was the pastor of the largest congregation on the planet. Are you with me? And, uh, and even though he did his best to lead them and guide them in righteousness, many of them made terrible choices. And uh, as the story goes, all of those except two died in the wilderness. They wandered. Now, it was not God's will. They refused to believe God. They refused to do what he wanted. His word was not important to them. What he said was just not, they just could care less. And it caused them to wander. And, and it's horrible when you think about it. And God in his kindness still provided manna, which is bread from heaven, and provided quail, which is meat. God still provided, calling them, wooing them, like a man does to a woman he's in love with. He, he courting them, and they wouldn't have him. They didn't want him. They rejected him. They didn't want to his word. They didn't put any, any, any priority to it. And what wound up happening, it wasn't his plan, it wasn't his will, but they wandered in the wilderness until the whole generation died. The whole generation died. Hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people died because they would, they refused. But there were two, Joshua and Caleb. And this refers to, you know, when they, when they came to the land, God told them to send spies. And God expected them to come back and say what God was saying about the situation. Yet they came back with what they saw. And it says here, we seem like grasshoppers in our own sight, and we must have seen the same to them. And God didn't say that. God didn't say, go in and tell me how you see with your natural eyes. He says, you go in and you tell me what you see with your spiritual eyes. Because I've already given you the land. It belongs to you. And those spies came back and not with a not with a, an alternative report, not with a, a uh, you know, a, uh, a, a, a bad report. The Bible calls it an evil report. Why? Because they were saying opposite of what God had said. God expected them to go in, take this land now. And they said no. So they wandered. And I told you, I only gave you the illustrations, not my notes, but it's okay. You know, they gave the illustration. This is what happened. They looked at one another and they said, well, what do you think we should do? Let, let's take a vote. Let's make a committee. What do you think we should do? I think we should go this way. Okay, we'll go this way. Oh, no, no, well, I think we should go. Okay, we'll go this way. How about now? We'll go this way. So they wandered. You see how it happens? When all your input is horizontal. If they would have turned to God and said, Father, we repent. We turn to you. Which way do we go? God would have said that way straight to the promised land, flowing with milk and honey. Scientists say they could have probably done it in two to three weeks. 
it almost is beyond comprehension how that many people can wander for 40 years. But that's what happens. And come on, don't say, I always tell people, don't point a finger at anybody else. You've got three coming right back at you. So don't ever say, well, you know, if I was there, I would have done different. Well, do different now. Amen? Yeah. I know, Pastor preaches hard, I do. But I don't make apologies, amen? The truth will make you free. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm going to preach the truth. So, notice the second quote. When obstacles stand in your way, are you like Caleb, ready to overcome anything? Or are you like the other men who went out to spy the land, only seeing the size of the obstacle and your own weaknesses? Caleb and the other men saw the same things. The difference was their perspective. While the other men saw themselves as weak, Caleb saw the Israelites as strong. Listen, not in themselves, but in God. With God, they could overcome any obstacle. Amen? Amen. So take it with you. Let it bless you. Our services, as you see, you're here today for our main worship service on Wednesday night. Excuse me. Normally we are here. We do what we call the Hour of Power. We are in the book of James, but we're postponing it this week or suspending it this week because our own uh, Reverend Nick Fontana is going to be preaching at St. Francis Church in Vernon, uh, which is going to be the last Lenten service before Easter. And then uh, we're doing one more Good Friday at 12 o'clock at the Glenwood Baptist Church. And then uh, don't miss our, uh, because of COVID, we've not been able to have our Easter sunrise, but this year we are having our Easter sunrise service. So 6.30 a.m. out at the gazebo at Maple Grange Park. Come, bring your families, come in your pajamas if you want, doesn't make a difference. You know, I remember when we were doing it, remember at the flats, the, the, some of the kids, the Luca kids, they came not only in their, in their pajamas, but in their sleeping bags. And, you know, and, and it was awesome, right? Remember those? And I don't care. Come without makeup, you ladies. You know, do us all a favor. Put a little. No, I'm kidding. Teasing you, you know. But uh, you're with me. But um, anyway, and then Miss Carmel will have coffee and orange juice, bagels and, and um, donuts for you. We're having egg hunt for the kids. So uh, if you'd like to participate with that too, we are still receiving candy, small enough to go in eggs, eggs, whatever you want to do uh, would be a great blessing. We want to uh, be a blessing to the children. So don't forget Wednesday at seven o'clock, uh, Nick will be preaching at St. Francis Church. Refreshments will follow. If you'd like to come out and support him and uh, be a blessing that you're welcome to. All right, uh, let's continue with our, with our prayer. Uh, on the right side, we a number of weeks ago, we began praying for the people in the 1040 window. The 1040 window is a, is a band across uh, Europe, which is uh, mostly people who have never heard the gospel. Either they've never heard uh, because they're resistant against it. Some of those countries, it, it's, it's illegal to preach the gospel. But God loves those people. Amen. And he wants those people to hear the gospel and be saved. And so it falls on the church to pray. And so we've been praying for a number of weeks for the different uh, countries in that 1040 window. Today, it's Japan. So would you pray with me as we uh, take a look at it? A prayer for Japan. Father, we lift up Japan before you now, and we ask that you open the eyes of the Japanese people to see that the gospel is the good news for everyone, and not just the Western religion. We lift up the youth in Japan and ask that you would pour out your spirit on them and help them to find peace in you. Japan has 120 different denominations, so we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would unite them all under the banner of your love and help them to walk in unity as a solid witness to the lost and dying throughout the land. 97.9 .9 of the population has been unreached with the gospel. 97.9. .9. Lord, we ask that you reach them. We ask that you send your laborers to bring in the harvest to your kingdom for your glory in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We also began praying for our, our leaders, amen, for our, for our government, for our military. None of us like the price of gas. Some of us have different opinions as far as the administration, the governor, What's going on in the Ukraine and Russia? We, you know, and there are times where we can feel as though, what can we do? Our hands are tied. There's nothing I can do. That's not true, my brothers and sisters. Amen? You can pray. 
And the Bible says the effectual, continued, earnest, heartfelt prayers of righteous people make tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. So this is what God has called the church to do. Amen? We can go, and some are called to go. And we can give, and all are called to give. We can pray, and all are called to pray. Hallelujah. And so we began writing these actual prayers down in Japan. So was that prayer we just prayed enough? Do you think we, we made a, a, a tremendous impact? Yes, I think so. I believe we do, did. But God wants us to continue. And so pray this prayer. And, and pray as the Spirit of God leads you according to the Word of God to pray over the people of Japan. That salvation would come, that revival would come, that deliverance would come. That those strongholds that have held people in, bond, in bondage and captivity for so long would be broken off of their lives. Amen? I said before, imagine and, and pray for our, everybody that I mentioned earlier. Imagine, if you will, that revival came to the White House, regardless of whose administration is there. Re if revival came to the media, if revival came to the, to the Pentagon, to the military, and people got gloriously saved and their minds were, were, were now, they were no longer what's in it for me, but now it's, in it, it's, it's, it's how can I be a, a, a godly and honorable representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. It would change the way they think. It would change the way they talk. <clears throat> it would change their behavior. Imagine, all the whole Congress, the Senate, revival came. And all of a sudden it wasn't about political agendas. And it wasn't about what's in it for me. And how I can, you know, get kickbacks, and, and, and I'm not saying that's happening. Okay. Anyway, um, you know, but the point is that people decide they're going to do right. They're going to honor God. Can you envision it? Yeah. Thank you. Because if you can't, you're not praying enough. You need to be praying so you can see it. Amen? Yeah. It's not based on these natural eyes, my brothers and sisters. It never was. It's based on what you can see in the Spirit, the Word of God. Hallelujah. God saw the darkness. He saw the emptiness of what the world had become. And He said, light be, because with His spiritual eyes, He saw light. So He said, light be. And, and just follow. That's how creation Manifested how it's still manifesting. Hallelujah. I believe light, the speed of light is 186,000 minutes a sec, uh, miles per second. There's there's some other, not only 186, 186, four point something, whatever. Miles per second. Amen. And and scientists who don't know everything, thank God for scientists. I appreciate that, but they certainly don't know everything. Amen. Even scientists will concur that the universe is still expanding. Yeah, because God said light be, and he never stopped. So the universe is still expanding at the speed of light. Don't you think that's a little excess, Pastor Nick? Welcome to God. Amen. Amen? He does exceeding abundantly above what we can ask or think. And he's welcomed you into that lifestyle, into that attitude. Amen. There's nothing too hard for you. Why? Because greater is he who's in you than he who's in the world. Come on. Oh, Pastor Nick, hold on. Keep on going. But, you know, trying to get to, to the message. But I'm almost out of time already. Let me say this. I've got something bubbling in my spirit. I believe that's for Easter Sunday. But um, last time we talked about tools. Remember we were talking about tools? Different tools for different jobs. And, uh, and God has given us a toolbox. And this is the toolbox. And not everything can be accomplished with a hammer. There are different screwdrivers. Anybody know there are different screwdrivers? Uh, some of them are, are standard, which is flat. Some of them are Phillips, which is cross-shaped. There are bigger ones. There are smaller ones. If you're working on a you know, massive truck, you don't need those little ones for fixing eyeglasses. You need some big, heavy ones. Wrenches come in every assortment, size and shape. They, they, come, in every, they come in every style. 
How many of you can go down to the dollar store and buy a wrench for a dollar twenty-five now? The dollar dollar twenty-five store. It's called now. You know, you can buy a wrench there. And, and the first time you use it on something that really needs to be torqued, it's probably going to break because it's only worth a dollar. How many know you get what you pay for? It's true. But if you get something like, you know, Sears used to be, if it breaks, lifetime guarantee, you go and replace it. Well, there's some other tools that are even stronger and they're made, created for that very purpose. And they're varied, and, and there's so many of them, it's beyond our, you know, there are wrenches, there are screwdrivers, there are pliers, there are Allen wrenches, there are, and now we're talking saws of any shape and style, drills of every shape and style, drill bits from every shape and style, made of titanium, made, come on, the list, tools are amazing, aren't they? And, and, it, and God, and it's basically a, a, a tool for every job. And wisdom is to know what tool to use for whatever job, correct? If you've got a leak in your kitchen sink, don't use the hammer, right? You're, you're gonna have to find somebody, they're gonna come with wrenches, and they're gonna work on it with wrenches and, until they get it figured out and get it right, come on. So I shared with you last week that this book, this Bible, is your toolbox. And just as you were going to say, I want to become an apprentice fixing cars, they're not going to just say to you, okay, you're on your own, go get tools and figure it out. No, they're going to provide you tools and they're going to show you one by one how these tools work on that car. And the same thing with anything else. Ladies who are beauticians, for instance, I mean, there's not just one scissor, there's different things, trimmers and clippers and, and all kinds of different tools. And in the hands of somebody who knows how that tool works, it's amazing. Amen? Same thing as anything else. There, somebody who knows how that tool works can make that thing work. I've seen people who use woodworking tools to make amazing things, beautiful things, and sanders and polishers. It's pretty spectacular. I, I watched this, this. There's one thing I saw, I think, on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, of they made these two plaques of wood, and then they put these, you know, Star Wars figurines, ships and all, in the middle, and they poured in epoxy and everything, lacquered it, and then when it was done, it looked like this. It was a moving river. It's basically a coffee table. That's that's some coffee table. But you gotta know what you're doing to get that and to sand it and to get it just right. I happen to like car shows. I like to watch car shows. And when they bring out, you know, bring out that beautiful whatever that car is, you're looking at, at lots of work. Lots of behind the scenes work to get that car to look the way it looks. How many know God has called us to the greatest craft of all? Is bringing salvation to the people in the planet. Amen? And he's given us tools. Every tool. We need to know what the tools are and then we need to become masters at using those tools. And some of the tools I've told you is prayer. I'm not going to take the time, but you're welcome to write these down. I'm going to give you quite a few scriptures. Write them down. And uh, I might print them for you so you can have them. But there are different tools for different jobs. When I say pray, that's, that's just, that's a general call because there are many types of prayer. In other words, there are different tools in the toolbox. You got to know what to use when, and you need to learn how to use it. Hallelujah. So there are nine that I, I mean, 11 that I found, and I'm sure there's more. Number one, the prayer of faith. Prayer of faith. That's number one. When your heart is fixed, when you find the Word of God and the Word of God makes you a promise and you believe it and you speak it out of your mouth by faith. Regardless of what you hear, regardless of what you see, you speak it out by faith. By faith in the name of Jesus and you speak. Joshua's heart was fixed. Amen? I don't have time to give all of them. I just might mention them. Maybe we'll go back after Easter and continue on because it's important and I believe God wants me to share it with you. It has to be a Sunday where I don't go lots of different directions. Amen. Prayer of faith is number one. Number two is a prayer of agreement. Prayer of agreement. The number one person that, that we can agree with is God. 
So we don't know what to do when we just can't see any way out. We go to the Word of God and we find out what God says about the situation. Amen? I'm, having a, I'm not having a problem, but I'm, I'm having a problem with my... my I'm not having a problem, so I can't use her as an example. But uh, I'm having a problem with my wife. Okay? Make it up. I'm not, thank God. But I'm having a problem, and I'm starting to think to myself, you know, if she would just change, if she would just do what I say, the list goes on and on. I've tried that to feel miserably in, in reality. So anyway, notice. So you get to the point where you're just lost. You don't know what to do. Who can figure out the ways of a woman? You know, the whole, all that other stuff. But then you go to the Word of God, and the Word of God says, love, husbands, love your wives. And you go, okay, wait a minute. Uh, it doesn't say husbands, fix your wife. It doesn't say husbands, uh, uh, blame your wife. It doesn't say husbands, um, your wife is your problem. It says husbands, love your wives. Amen? Like Jesus loves the church. That's a sacrificial love. That's a love that supports and undergirds. That's a love that 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 chooses not to see the the uh, faults, amen. But to to bless and lift them up and say, Lord, I thank you for the gift that you've given to me, amen. And she's precious to me. She'll always be precious to me, and I'm going to treat her right. Hallelujah. So remember what I said. There are times where we point a finger at some of the now. That that's my problem. If that, if that only would get right, you got three coming right back at you. You see them? Realize. So, so you know, for emphasis now, you know, because you, you're just, God's talking to you, but you don't want to listen. So you're saying, that's my problem. If only that, well, they or she or he or whatever, now you're going to emphasize, you know what? They're my problem. Now you got six coming back at you. Come on, my brothers and sisters. Anybody? Ever have that happen to them? Have any of you ever heard God speak to you through it? Saying, they're not the problem. Come on. They're not the problem. You do what the Bible says. And God will get involved in your situation. As long as you refuse His wisdom, then you're on your own. So it's almost like, go fix that car on your own. Go figure it out. And God is saying, no, this is the owner's manual. So come and study it. And you'll cause your way to be prosperous. You'll have good success. You'll be blessed in all of your deeds. Amen? So, so do what the Word says. It's a great place to build your life. Amen? Story after story, I don't have time, but the Old Testament stories, why are they there? As examples to us. When the people did not seek God, they were consumed, they were easily defeated, they were whining and moaning, complaining and griping and babies, sucking their thumbs. But when they were seeking God and doing what was right in His sight, they were unconquerable. Amen. They were strong in the Lord. They did exploits. They took down cities. Hallelujah. They took the heads off of giants. God forever. Amen. It all depends. How many know it's not different people? Same people. It all depends on perspective. Amen. Hallelujah. And so the prayer of agreement, you can get yourself into agreement with God. How many know he's not going to change? So you can beg and plead and cry and whine and all the rest of it. Lord, you know, just, just can't you just do it my way? Forget that. Amen? And you can do that all you want. You can spend years doing that. And he's going to, you know, uh, be patient with you. And he's going to speak to you. But he's not about you. Who's king? Who's God? Amen? So, so... Amen. Yeah. I told you I have to share with you because I want to help you. When we first started taking over this building, I was sitting right here. The church was empty. I was sitting right there. I was praying. And I was saying to the Lord, Lord, how is this going to happen? You know, 
he had told me to receive the church and I received it. But you know, my mind kicked in. I'm starting to try to figure out how it's going to happen. And the devil starts to accommodate you, you know, start thinking about how this is not going to work and how that's not going to, and how this, how I can't see it, I can't understand, I can't. But, but I was praying. I was really praying. Are you with me? And, and I tell you, God is my witness. The Lord appeared to me. I, I was praying. He said, my big guy. I was praying. My knees were a little bit parted. I was just sitting. And, and um, the Lord Jesus appeared to me. He did. He stood right in the place between where my legs were a little open up stood right there he put his face in my face put his finger in my face and he said you know what to do do it you know what not to do don't do it over I was like wow basically slapped him you know jerked, this, jerked me out of my stupor how am I, I got to figure out how it's going to it? I never was asked to figure out how it's going to happen I never was trying to figure it out in my head. I don't care. I can't see it. I, dear God, I've come a long way since that then. Amen? I've learned that there are certain words that you never say to God. I can't. It's a curse word to Him. It is. Oh, I can't. I can't. No, He says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So stop it. I don't want to hear it again. I told you before. There are certain four-letter words I don't think you want in your home. If people are going to throw them around, you're going to say, excuse me, we don't use that kind of language around here. Right? Well, in the presence of God, you don't use words like can't or won't. Amen. Right? And we, we never almost, you know, catch ourselves before you say it. Don't, don't say it. Don't say it. God says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And all of a sudden, my mind starts to figure out how. And we put in that horrible word. That word that brings such despair. Yeah, but. Yeah, but. In other words, everything you say means nothing to me. Because what I see and how I feel and what so-and-so says, it's, it's, that's it. That's the way it is. So catch yourself. I have learned to catch myself. I don't say those words anymore. Because as far as God's concerned, that is filthy. That's filthy, amen? And we'll be held accountable for every word that comes out of our mouths. So get out of the habit of saying, I can't, I won't, and yeah, but. Say yes, amen, hallelujah. If God is for me, who can be against me? The answer is nobody, ain't nobody. No way, no how, amen, amen. I am more than a conqueror through him who loved me and gave himself for me. There's no glory to God. Amen? Amen. And if you struggle with it, if the thought comes, yeah, but, or can't, or won't, you just need to go over it again. Just stay there. Just build, you know, just camp there. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There's nothing I can't do through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? There's a lot I can't do naturally. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Why? Because he's the master in every field, in every area. Yeah. I, I can pass that physics test. Why? Because I know the one who created physics, who's a master at it. I can And the list goes on in every area of life. Amen? You and I have been invited into such an amazing relationship. Praise God forever. Amen. I'm just going to mention them. We'll stop this morning, but I'll mention them and we'll continue. I'll give you, I'm going to print them out. I'll write the scriptures so you have them. You can research them by yourself and, and be a blessing. So number one, the prayer of faith. Number two, prayer of agreement. Number three, a prayer to bind and loose. It falls into the, the prayer of, you know, of the authority of the believer. Prayer of commitment, which is a very personal prayer. Prayer of dedication and consecration. Hallelujah, which we need to do all the time. Amen. We are not our own. We've been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God. Prayer of petition. Amen. Where we bring our petitions before God. Prayer of fellowship and praise and worship. Did you know that just fellowshipping with God and praising and blessing Him is a form of prayer? It is. And God wants us to become a master at each and every one of these. The prayer in battle. Hallelujah. Prayer of unity. Prayer in the Holy Ghost. Praying in tongues. Amen? 
is and in a prayer of intercession, standing in the gap. Rather than say, he's my problem, she's my problem, that's my problem, get on our knees before God and begin to pray. Not that God would fix them, that God would help you to see that that's not my problem. He's not my problem. That situation's not my problem. I have gotten my, my heart and my mind off of the one I'm supposed to be fixing my heart and mind on. Amen? And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And when I get my focus back where it belongs on Him, on His Word, and we begin to realize they're not my problem, but I'm going to pray. But you're going to pray from a different perspective, my brothers and sisters. See, if you pray on your own, you're going to pray, fix them, sick them, you do it. Do something with this. I can't do anything. I'm at the end of my rope. But if you pray from God's point of view that, that he loves them, that he has a plan for their life, to pray and really truly intercede. Amen? Amen. Father, I bring the, my, my, this person before you humbly, and I thank you that you're their God, that you're their Savior, would help them to grow in your grace, to grow in, however the Spirit of God leads you. You with me, my brothers and sisters? Amen. Hallelujah. So we'll break for this morning because my time has gotten away from me. I've given you so much. I Hopefully you, uh, you take good notes, um, but also go back and listen again if you would like, and um, I'm sure you'll get all kinds of things. You'll, you'll, you'll be listening. You'll say, I don't remember him saying that. Where was I when he said that? Oh, that's good. That, that answers the question I've been asking for years. Yeah. How many know? You know, who's the other guy that was a, a contemporary of, of, of him? That real big, big guy that was big on home runs. I can't remember. But uh, there are so many of them. We don't live in those days. There are some now. Derek Jeter. You know, you know how valuable a Derek Jeter baseball would be right now? It would be like crazy to hold on to it. Well, the point is, if you go to a baseball game and you have, you really follow baseball and you really want one of them baseballs, doesn't matter who that, who your hero is, you know, Mickey Mantle dates me anyway. I've done a couple of too much anymore. But anyway, the truth of the matter is you go to that game, you don't go empty handed, you bring the glove, right? You put yourself in a place where foul balls go or where home runs land. You normally don't put yourself behind, you know, the catcher and that big grate there. No, you go find yourself a place. And when every time the ball is hit, you're ready. Come on. And when you see that ball coming in your direction, anywhere near in your vicinity, you get up on top of chairs that nobody else is sitting in, kindly, right? And you go after that ball. And when that ball comes, you jump. It's all about catching that ball. And when you come down with that ball and you look at it, and you know, that's that what makes it all worthwhile. Come on, amen? Now we'll do that over a baseball or whatever it is you like. My aunt, who's gone home to heaven, worked for CBS, I believe, or NBC back in the day when the Beatles first came to the United States. She was at the concerts, the Beatle concerts, pretty much all of them in the United States because she worked for the company. One day, John Lennon was chewing a piece of gum. He spit the piece of gum out as that piece of gum. <laughs> Truly. If they were somehow to examine it, it would have John Lennon's DNA in it. A gnarly, nasty, spit out piece of gum. Yet to her, that thing, come on, that thing was so valuable, that chewed piece of gum, because it But I want you to know, how would you treat that piece of gum I'm not talking about, but that baseball? You would treat it carefully. You would show people, but you'd, put it, you'd protect it. Amen? What I'm talking about is receiving the Word of God. Amen? God, if you're not careful, will blow right by you. But if you make up your mind, I'm going to catch it. 
I'm going to get a hold of what God's saying to me. I'm going to consider it valuable. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get what God's trying to tell me. It's, it changes everything. How many of those more precious than, than a baseball signed by all of the greats? It's more valuable than a, than a spit out piece of gum from John Lennon, right? Or, or George Harrison, a piece of, what's his name? Uh, Paul McCartney, a lock of his hair. Man, come on. There was, do you remember when the Beatles first came? People were insane. If they could strip their clothes off just to have a piece of, piece of them, are you listening? The, the insanity of it all. My goodness, imagine if, if they treated the gospel with, with that so, same kind of, uh, you know, the woman, there's a woman with issue of blood who did. She got on her hands and knees and she went, she went after it. This is the, there's nothing more important. There's nothing more important. I don't deserve it. I can't earn it. She got close. People around her wouldn't let her pass. She got on the floor. She crawled. When she couldn't crawl, she squirmed. If I could just touch the hem of his garment, that was the most important thing there. What happened when she did? Healing. It, she came to experience complete and absolute healing and restoration. How valuable is Jesus to you? Come on. Come on, I got a break. Father, we love you so much. We thank you for the truth of your word. We love you so much. We appreciate you. We thank you for your long suffering and your kindness towards us. We, we greatly appreciate your patience with us. And none of us are perfect, but we have set our hearts to go, to go after it, to do our very best, to seek you, to bring honor and glory to your name, and to be obedient sons and daughters, so that we might uh, be co-laborers together with you in this work of, of, of bringing the glorious gospel to the people that we share this planet with before uh, it's too late, before they close their eyes in death. Uh, it, God forbid any people in our sphere of influence would die and go to hell. Uh, Lord, we pray that uh, we would be moved this morning with compassion and that the call to, to pray for even those who have hurt us would rise up so big in us that it would become priority number one that they get saved and that they, uh, that they come to the knowledge of the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. As always, Father, we thank you, praise you for this and every opportunity, your blessing in the name of Jesus. Would you just stretch your hand out towards me this morning? Father, I pray blessing upon my brothers and sisters that you have by your stripes healed every sickness and every disease. And Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that we no longer say my sickness, my this, my that, but we say by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Hallelujah. I do not take ownership of sickness. I do not take ownership of disease. I do not take ownership of lack. I take ownership of the word of God. And the word of God says, I'm whole, I'm healed, I'm free. And I bless you, Father, and I thank you. That's what I'm going to say. That's what I'm going to believe. That's what I'm going to expect. And I thank you for watching over your word, performing it in my life, in Jesus' name. As always, Father, traveling mercies, as we return to our homes, may our homes be blessed. May today be a great blessing, and we give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. Hallelujah. We'll see you next Sunday right here at 10 o'clock. If you'd like to come on Wednesday, we appreciate it. Online, thank you so much for watching. God bless you. See you next time.